everybody, and welcome to this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you probably know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every edition, we highlight one of the nonprofits in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz kind of doing wonderful, wonderful work. And we're so fortunate uh, this edition to uh, be talking to Lori Egan, who is the Executive Director of the Coastal Watershed Council. So, Lori, welcome. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And Lauren, for folks uh, who don't really know uh, as much about you as uh, they would like to, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you came to this great work for the Coastal Watershed Council. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I grew up in the Berkshires in rural western Massachusetts in an area that is the Housatonic River watershed. And I, you know, had this, this childhood where I really could spend time outdoors and in and around water from a little brook in my backyard to some of the, the lakes and rivers nearby. And, you know, I, I really appreciated having that access to nature and it really helped shape who I am today. So I, I went to college in Southern California and moved to Santa Cruz about 10 years ago. Oh. And, um, you know, pretty shortly thereafter, found my way to the Coastal Watershed Council. I've worked here for nine years now and have held a variety of different roles. And most recently stepped into the executive director role about a month ago. Well, congratulations, and that's a, it's a wonderful role uh, to, to be to have. And uh, no program about the Coastal Watershed Council would be complete unless we mentioned your predecessor, Greg Pepping, who is not only a great friend of mine, but a great friend of community television, and what a great community person he's been over time. So big shoes to fill, but I'm Absolutely. sure you're up to the task. Yeah, you know, and I, re I had the pleasure of working with Greg for those full nine years at Coastal Watershed Council. So I really do credit his leadership and, and really his mentorship for, um, you know, feeling prepared to step into this role today and where the organization is headed. You know, we're a really strong and thriving nonprofit here in Santa Cruz. And Greg did a lot of tremendous work to, to make that possible. And, you know, the, the organization was also founded by Donna Myers. So there's a, a long right. history of fantastic leadership here. And I just, I feel humbled to be, be taking the helm. Wonderful. I didn't know that about Donna, so, uh, I, but I'm not a bit surprised. Um, you know, we were talking earlier before the program about uh, all of the different programs and projects that the Coastal Watershed Council has going on. When I looked at the website, there's so many of them. I was saying that, you know, we could spend a whole day talking about them and it would be a day well spent and maybe we'd get through, but maybe we can just highlight a few. Uh, one of the uh, programs that I was most interested in myself, as I mentioned, was the, um, uh, the, the Rangers program. Mm -hmm. And with the kids, because I, I'll, I'll just say as a side, I'm a sanctuary steward mm -hmm. for Save Our Shores. And one of the great joys of my time as a sanctuary steward was taking young people out to the coast, you know, and introducing them to the environment and how, what, what protectors and stewards they are. So, so tell us a little bit about that program. Uh, it sounds so fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah, I too love our Watershed Rangers program. It's that's the name that we call our environmental education work. Uh -huh. We focus mo mainly on elementary school aged youth throughout Santa Cruz County. And we lead lessons both in the classroom on field trips to the San Lorenzo River, and then also during summer months, spring break after school, and some of those out of the classroom times. And we always make sure that those that engagement with our kids is done over multiple visits. So in the classroom, every kid gets four lessons from the Coastal oh Watershed Council. And one of those is a field trip. And we're really looking to build not only that scientific knowledge and um, you know the even the math and English skills, but also really that connection to nature. So we absolutely love working with the kids. And you know, you mentioned a bit about that. Um, as a sanctuary steward, and, and thank you very much for your volunteerism in that space. But, you know, that connection to our natural resources, how important that is. And we find, you know, in the city of Santa Cruz, there's so many kids that live directly along the Santa Cruz Riverwalk Park. This is their closest community space, and it's surprising how many have never been before. Yeah. So that's always one of those things that we look for is in our program, we're taking kids on field trips, and sometimes it's their first time at the river, despite living so close. And then after the program, we'll see them coming back with siblings and parents and friends, you know, everything from scootering after school to going and seeing a native plant that they helped to plant through the program. So it's a really rewarding and, and just wonderful aspect of what we're able to do. 
Well, that's terrific. And I want to say early on that uh, these programs, uh, especially for nonprofits, are not done in an economic vacuum. So if people are interested in donating, uh, they should certainly do that. Uh, they can go to your website, I'm guessing, and make a donation, a large or small, to really help this great work. Absolutely. Every donation counts and makes a difference. Everything from helping to fund that plant that the kid was able to plant to, you know, transportation for our field trips and, and, you know, all of those different components really go into making such a dynamic program. So folks can go to our website, which is coastal-watershed.org, or they can give us a phone call. The best phone number to reach us is 831-464-9200. And I'll pick up the phone and, and chat with whoever is calling in. And it's, uh, you know, watershed education is such an important element, I think, uh, in what you're doing and so important to the community. I was really pleased to see on the website that you do a lot of virtual tours about your education. Tell us something about that. That's fascinating. Yeah, you know, the virtual tours were really born out of, of the pandemic and response to COVID-19 hmm. as you know, in March 2020, schools closed their doors and teachers were really scrambling to figure out how are we going to take the curriculum that kids are learning in the classroom and bring it into a, a distance learning format. And so, you know, teachers really worked tirelessly from the start of the pandemic through till today as to adapting to every public health change and all these different components. Mm -hmm. And along the way, you know, the, the ability to get outside, to break from the screen and, you know, to continue some of that focus on science education, some of those pieces were, you know, harder to prioritize. Mm -hmm. So what the Coastal Watershed Council did is we talked to teachers through partnerships that we have with the Santa Cruz County Office of Education. And we heard, you know, if you can help fill this gap for us and you can help provide some of these, these uh, curriculums, but in a, in a way that kids and their families can engage with at home, that would be great. And so we started doing that. We also started doing some of those, um, the classroom visits became virtual in that, that first year of the pandemic. And we actually reached a record number of teachers. We worked oh with over 90 teachers in 90 classrooms that year. And it was really because the demand for our program was just so high with all of the different changes. And, and we were able to step up to, to uh, you know, fill that gap and that need and really support kids the best we could um, during those, those challenging times. Well, what a wonderful uh, silver lining that is to the to the dark cloud that kind of has been the pandemic for so long. It didn't really occur to me that that might be something that that really filled the void uh, in your educational component, you know, during this pandemic time. And uh, as again, I was del just delighted to see the number of virtual mm -hmm. tours you have of, of all different kinds of areas and aspects of Santa Cruz. That's wonderful. Um, one other thing that I did see on the website that I'm most interested in as well is uh, uh, water quality management. I know that you've been you know, one of the primary organizations that's really taken on water quality management and measurement you know, uh, over time. Tell us a little bit about that program. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Coastal Watershed Council's history is really rooted in improving water quality. When we were founded in 1995 by Donna Myers, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, the, the organization was really focused on getting volunteers out into the field and teaching them how to measure our water quality. And as the organization has grown and, and changed and adapted, we really have been able to carry that forward in our work. So just this past weekend, we actually hosted Snapshot Day, which is now in its 23rd year in wow. partnership with the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, really looking at all these different creeks and streams that drain into our Monterey Bay and what are, what are the health of those at this time? So volunteers are equipped with a kit and they go out into the field and take some field samples as well as um, taking water quality samples that we then send to a lab for further analysis. So it's a great opportunity, really complements the ongoing work of the city and county of Santa Cruz that are out there on a regular basis taking those samples. And on, on events like Snapshot Day, we're able to go to even more sites and see how has that, that data changed over the years. And, uh, you know, that snapshot day, that's uh, even though we're an evergreen program, as, as you may know, so we'll play this in rotation for a bit, but then it'll be played, you know, during the year uh, several times, let people, you know, know more and continue to learn about the Coastal Watershed Council, but that the snapshot day, people uh, uh, can volunteer now for the next one, and I wanted to make sure that people understand that the Coastal Watershed Council wants volunteers and can use volunteers in these programs, so they can also volunteer on your on your website as well. 
Absolutely. Yeah. There's a little a button on our website that says get involved and you can yeah. see some of the different options from coming out to events, um, to volunteering, to giving a donation, even applying for an internship. You know, there's so many different ways and we really do look for support from the community to make this work possible. And that's wonderful. Um, one thing that you were talking about uh, earlier, and I think that people would be very interested in, uh, particularly with uh, the concerns about the drought and our, and our sustainability of our water supply, and that is uh, watershed uh, management. Tell us a little bit about how Coastal Watershed Council is really essentially involved in uh, watershed uh, management here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, many folks know this, but, you know, I think it's also becomes a surprise to some folks that the San Lorenzo River is the primary drinking water source for about 100,000 people here in Santa Cruz County. So, you know, when we think about our water resources and, and how we're interacting with those, you know, every time you're turning on your tap or taking a shower, you know, it's you're interacting with the San Lorenzo River. And we really, you know, through our environmental education programs and, and community engagement really work to stress that that you know, we are connected to the San Lorenzo River every day. And one of the ways that we really continue to increase that connection is bringing people out to volunteer, like, like I've talked about a little bit. And specifically in our habitat restoration work, people have the opportunity to come down to the lower San Lorenzo River and spend some time in nature, caring for native species, helping to remove some harmful introduced species like ice plant or Himalayan blackberry that tend to take over the hillside. And we've replaced them with over 25 different biodiverse native species. And when you're out in these sites, you get to see this increase in, in birds and bees and bugs. And of course, that has these cascading benefits for the whole ecosystem. So it's one of those things where you can do a little bit of work on a Saturday morning we have those events every second Saturday of the month. We call them River Health Days to really focus on river health. And, you know, coming out there and doing that little piece, it makes a big impact. So we invite volunteers on a regular basis to do that. And if folks have a group, you know, sometimes they're a youth group or maybe even your company wants to come out for a volunteer experience, reach out to us because we love scheduling those at any time and are always looking for a helping hand. Now, the watershed uh, restoration really is so important. Uh, again, we were discussing earlier about uh, how crucial that is for the sustainability uh, of our water supply. And as I was saying, that we're in a long, sustained drought now, and you know, we, the water is a finite, really, uh, mm -hmm. commodity. And, and to really help to protect that, the watershed you know, needs to be functioning at, at the optimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, as we think about climate change, you know, you're bringing up drought, which is a really important thing for us to be paying attention to. We also need to be thinking about increased flooding. You know, with sea level rise and more intense storms, it's one of the things that we focus on for the river and the communities along it to understand that you know some of our lowest lying areas in our community are areas along the river. And so how as a community are we going to focus on our relationship with the river as we deal with this really urgent crisis of climate change? And now as executive director, you kind of have an overall responsibility for all of these various programs and projects that are going on. Uh, just tell us about uh, a few that are of particular interest to you as you kind of move into this leadership position and you really start to focus on things that, that uh, are gonna push the Coastal Watershed Council kind of into the future. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've touched on a number of our programs from our youth watershed rangers program to some of the water quality and habitat enhancement work we're doing and that community engagement of bringing folks who live along the river out to really experience the joys of this place. And, you know, all of those tie together and both there's there's the environmental and the ecological component of it. And there's also this social system. How are we interacting with this this space? Because, you know, when we talk about the San Lorenzo, the, the area that the Coastal Watershed Council is really focused on is this final two and a half mile stretch so that our work is complementing those in the upper watershed and all of these different areas. And in this space, thinking about how our river intersects with housing and you know, recreation and health and, and climate change and all these different components, those are, are some of the conversations that we're having with our partners as to how are we gonna move forward in this space. And, one thing that's very exciting is that, you know, as we've talked about the San Lorenzo River and transforming this space for a number of years, in this year ahead, we're going to start to see some of those changes happen. There will be new developments along Front Street that will bring more housing to the river itself and reintegrate the Riverwalk with downtown Santa Cruz. 
And in those conversations, we really see Coastal Watershed Council's role is making sure that, you know, those developments and, and increased uh, attention to the river can really bring about ecological benefits as well. So that's where we're looking at some of these ideas of habitat restoration and some of these components and really doubling down on that and really getting folks out there to engage with the natural beauty of this space as much as the, the you know, cool connectors to a cafe or that kind of thing. I think it's so appropriate and really uh, so important uh, that at a time when we're, uh, as a city and as a community, kind of uh, turning our face a little bit more toward the river levee and trying to incorporate that more into the community thing is to have uh, somebody like uh, Donna Myers, you said, a uh, founder and a council member presently, uh, to really champion and move that forward because it really needs to be a collaborative effort between the community and our civic leaders and the organizations like Coastal Watershed Council, Save Our Shores, for instance, to be able to really turn the focus on the San Lorenzo, but do it in a way that is going to create an atmosphere that really is going to be good for everybody. Absolutely. And collaboration is totally the name of the game of this. You know, that's one of the things that I love about this work is that we do get to collaborate with so many different diverse partners. And there's so many folks that really work tirelessly to benefit the Lower San Lorenzo River right now. Folks like Jane Mio, who run the Benchlands Environmental Stewardship Team, BEST, it's a phenomenal program. You know, every and then folks like the Santa Cruz Warriors who are along the river and thinking about, hey, how could an arena potentially integrate with this space and and bringing their, um, you know, ticket holders and folks out to volunteer and everyone in between, you know, city school, you name it. It is such a collaborative effort to really make sure that this river is thriving, and that's our vision: is you know that this space in the heart of our community is a space where everybody can connect to nature in their daily lives and you really feel drawn to it and welcome when you're here. So it truly does take a village to make that happen. And it's it's something I love about this work. I really do work love working, you know, with folks in diverse industries and with diverse interests and to how the river is really a part of all of those conversations. And it's such important work locally. I did notice in, in your bio on the website that you have some uh, history in, in pushing uh, uh, legislative initiatives forward and trying to get to some broader issues addressed. Uh, are you going to be doing some of that as, as well as you continue to work as executive director? Yeah, I mean, our partnership with the, the city of Santa Cruz is so crucial to everything we're doing at Coastal Watershed Council. You know, the, the city owns and operates the land along the river itself. So we regularly work with the Parks Department, Public Works, Water Department, you name it. <laughs> we're working across, um, across those different departments there. And when we have an opportunity to really look at how, you know, a local policy can help improve the river, we want to be able to do that. Codifying some of those pieces really makes these environmental protections a lot stronger. So as an example, over the past few years, one of the things we looked at is, um, as we think about water quality and bacteria levels in the river, we really want to reduce those bacteria levels to get our water as clean as possible. And, you know, a lot of folks thinking about the San Lorenzo, we'll talk about septic tanks up in San Lorenzo Valley. And when you look at the data, the county has done a phenomenal job of really addressing some of those issues. However, we were looking at this, this issue in the city of Santa Cruz, where a lot of our sewer lateral pipes, what connect our homes to those sewer mains, mm -hmm. are these older pipes that are starting to crack and break. And you notice it when you have a major failure, that's something that can't be missed. But when you have, um, you know, sort of a smaller crack or something like that, we can still be getting bacteria in our waterways. So the Coastal Watershed Council worked with a group of local realtors in the city of Santa Cruz to develop this policy that when a home is sold, there is an inspection of that sewer lateral pipe just to see what state it's in, you know, and, and that policy is one where, you know, it will protect water quality moving forward and really helps to make sure that those sometimes overlooked components of, of improved water quality are front of mind and, and being acted on on a regular basis. It's interesting in how those things are really so interconnected. I, again, I noticed on your bio that uh, you are, uh, are you still involved with the climate action plan here in, in the city of Santa Cruz? And, and that's just a wonderful approach. Uh, I uh, always often bemoan the fact that I wish we were doing more for climate mm -hmm. here in Santa Cruz, but, but or at least we're strategizing about what we can do. And, and at some yeah. point we can do that. Yeah, I sit on the city of Santa Cruz's climate action task force and it's been, you know, just as you described, an effort to really look at what can we do as a city and as community members here to really reduce those greenhouse gas emissions and really make sure that 
we're addressing this climate emergency head on. And uh, I think that's really uh, more so now on everybody's mind than the, maybe it has been in the past and appropriately so, uh, you know, the things that are happening in Santa Cruz, we have kind of a change in, in atmosphere and infrastructure and actually the, how, the whole, you know, mechanism of what Santa Cruz is going to look like in terms of, of development, in terms of how we're going to, you know, marry that to environmental concerns. And uh, that is something that the holistic approach, I'm sure that you can appreciate it as, as a leader in the environmental and work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have the, you know, there's, there's always change coming, right? And it's a matter of how do we rise to the challenges and, and do all that we can to stop climate change? How do we rise to the challenge of thinking about, you know, the future of our city and, and how we care for our natural spaces? And I'd love to bring this back to just, you know, the work that we're doing with youth, because I think as you, as you think about, you know, why is it that folks are more clued into the climate crisis now? I think youth voice has played a tremendous role in that. And when we think about our Watershed Rangers program and really equipping and, and helping to empower that next generation of activists, you know, it's not for someday down the line, but it's for right now. It's pretty impactful when, you know, a fifth grader comes up to you and says, you know, what are you doing to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions? And, and they get it and they're paying attention in, in a way that really can inspire all of us. You know, it's really such a wise and, and forward-thinking policy uh, to really involve youth, young people in especially uh, the climate action to be able, they're projecting, you know, not only their present, but, but their future, all of our futures. And I think that that is something that's really going to be uh, beneficial as we go down the road. We only have a few minutes left. We, we It's been such a joy talking to you and getting to know you. And again, you know, welcome to uh, your role as, as a leader now, as, as, as executive director of Coastal Watershed Council, which is really one of the signature organizations, you know, for environmental and watershed and climate control here in Santa Cruz. Uh, what do you see uh, the, the, the near future and perhaps just a glimpse into the, uh, the larger future of the Coastal Watershed Council as we move forward? Absolutely, yeah. But the, I mean, our future, I mentioned the collaboration aspect of our work, mm -hmm. and that is so critical to how we plan to move forward as an organization, really making sure that the folks that that live along the San Lorenzo River are engaged in this work, that feel connected to their closest park and feel that, you know, the understand really that that water that's coming out of our taps is from the San Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. So as we think about engaging those folks and we think about, you know, some of the parks improvements that we can make here, you know, we're looking at that habitat restoration work paired with, you know, development and increased housing along the river. And specifically in these spaces, how can we create sort of a, a proof of concept site where we can see the real benefits of river improvements, you know, in one or two or three years time. But this isn't just a conversation about the future of our river, but this is something that we're taking action on every day as an organization. There's a role for everyone to play in it. And we're excited to show people the results of those that work. Yeah, Lori, again, uh, as I was saying, we only have a few minutes left, but uh, before we leave, uh, just give us a glimpse again uh, of, of how you see the Coastal Watershed Council as it's developing its programs now and for the future. Absolutely. I mentioned the, you know, the collaboration components of our work as being really critical, that youth voice is a really critical component of our work. And I think, you know, as I as I think about the future of this work, I think about the, the physical changes that we're going to see here along the lower San Lorenzo River. And, you know, right now, if you walk out into this space, the river is dynamic and it changes and it's a really special space to be in. And we really want to, to, to help everybody in Santa Cruz really have that experience and realize that. So we're looking at, you know, doubling down on some of this habitat enhancement work I mentioned, really specifically looking at the areas between the lower Avenue and SoCal Avenue bridges, that's where we're going to start to see some of the first developments along the river start to incorporate the river walk into those buildings instead of turning our backs on those. And we really believe that, you know, paired with that can be this more vibrant habitat, can be these biodiverse native species, and can be a space where folks can interact with those. So we're continuing that work, really focusing in that space and on those collaborations with everybody from school groups to the downtown streets team to, corp, mm -hmm. you know, sort of corporate and company groups and, and you name it. So there's an opportunity for everyone to get involved. 
And, you know, in, in two, three years time, when you come out to this space, I think it will look very different, not only from the physical infrastructure side of things, but from the really biodiverse habitat that you'll be able to see along the river. Well, I applaud that approach uh, and that uh, great work. I've long been an advocate of uh, finding ways to incorporate uh, San Lorenzo with the community, with the downtown. I think that you're you know, on that path. I think you're going to be leading those policies and those changes. So thank you again for that work. Thank you. Yep. So, Lori, as, as we finish, uh, again, uh, this work is not done in an economic or or, or people vacuum. Uh, tell us, you know, how we can donate and how we can volunteer and become part of this great work. Yeah, there is really a role for everyone to play in this river transformation story. And we often talk about it that, you know, you can share your time and volunteer with us. You, every second Saturday of the month, we have our River Health Days Habitat Enhancement events. Um, you can sign up for those on our website, coastal-watershed.org. We also encourage people to share their money and give donations to support this work. Every do donation, no matter how big or how small, really makes a big difference for our organization and our work. You can even become a monthly donor to the Coastal Watershed Council and give a small amount um, each month. And you know that gives us something as a nonprofit that we can really regularly rely on. We love those monthly donors. Thank you to all of those who contribute in that way. And lastly, you know, your ideas. This is a story that is really going to be shaped by this community. And at Coastal Watershed Council, we want to hear from you. And we want to hear, you know, what you think is, is working well or could be better and just what ideas you have for the river. Any, you know, no matter how wild they might be, let's come up with a, a, um, a plan for this river moving forward that incorporates your voice and shares your ideas and things maybe that you've seen in other communities along other rivers that you think should be here in Santa Cruz. So uh, we're excited to hear from you and really appreciate the many different folks that are involved all the time, every year. You know, some folks even every month are coming out and we really appreciate all those efforts. Well, we're happy here at uh, Community Television to let people know what great work you're doing. It is time and energy and money very, very well spent. And, and once again, uh, Lori Egan, Executive Director of Coastal Watershed Council, thank you so much for all the work that you have done over the years uh, on behalf of the community. But thanks for the work that you're, that you're about to embark on. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have you here. And uh, thanks once again for joining us today on, on Profit Spotlight. Thank you so much, Steve. That's been our program today for Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, join us next edition when we look at another nonprofit in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing wonderful, wonderful work like the Coastal Watershed Council. I've been Steve Plage. I'll see you next time. <laughs>